Hi there guys! Glad to see that you could join me again for another magnificent and marvelous math lesson with Miss Antonia Bain. Hmm, I wonder what we'll be talking about today. Well, The melodious sounds of the Bahamian Junkano music. But today, we have some serious Junkano problems. Let's get ready to multiply decimal numbers in word problems. Let's take a look at our lesson objectives. By the end of this lesson, students will be able to multiply decimals with numbers up to the thousands place and solve word problems multiplying decimals. Before we begin, let's do a quick review. What is 7 and 52 hundredths multiplied by 1 and 7 tenths? First thing we must do is set up our problem. Now, Let's begin to multiply. When we are multiplying by decimals, we must treat it as if we are multiplying regular whole numbers. That's the first step. So let's multiply as if we were multiplying whole numbers. 7 times 2 is 14. Regroup. 7 times 5 is 35. Plus 1 gives us 36. We regroup. 7 times 7 is 49. Plus 3 gives us 52. Now we place a 0 as our placeholder and we begin multiplying by the next digit. 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 7 is 7. Now, it's time to add our partial products. 4 plus 0 is 4. 6 plus 2 is 8. 2 plus 5 is 7. And 5 plus 7 is 12. We're not done yet. We need to put in our decimal point. Who remembers how many places should our decimal point be? Yes, it should be three places. There are two digits behind the decimal point in the first number and one digit behind the decimal point in the second number. That's three decimal places. So our decimal point should go here. That gives us our final answer as 12 and 784 thousandths. Now, let's look at some multiplication word problems. Before we can do that, we need to look at those multiplication keywords. These are the words that signify multiplication. Times, double, twice, equal groups, per, each, and all together. All of these and many more tell us that we have to multiply when we see them. Now, let's look at our first problem. To help us solve word problems, we must use the UPSC method. Understand, plan, solve, and check. So let's begin by understanding the problem. When we understand the problem, we read the problem. We circle what we know and underline the question. Let's begin by reading the problem. The Valley Boys rushed three laps at a distance of three and 2,500 miles per lap. How far did they have to rush all together? Hmm, 
when we understand, we have to circle what we know. We know that they rush three laps, and each lap was three and twenty-five hundred miles. Now that we know that, we need to underline our question. What do they want us to do? What do they want us to figure out? They want us to figure out how far did they have to rush all together. Beautiful. Now that we understand, the next step says that we must plan. When we plan, we're looking for our keywords. We're looking for those strategies. We're trying to figure out what should we do. By planning, when we look at this problem, there is a word there that tells us or signifies that we have to multiply. That word is per. That's correct. Per means to multiply. Now that we plan, it's time to, that's right, solve. When we solve, we need to set up our problem. Now we can begin to multiply. Remember, we multiply decimals as if we're multiplying whole numbers. Let's multiply now. 3 times 5 is 15. Regroup. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7. 3 times 3 is 9. We cannot forget our decimal point. In our number, there are two digits behind the decimal point. So in our answer, there has to be two digits behind the decimal point. Now that we've solved, the last step is always for us to check our answers. And when we check a multiplication problem, we use division. So let's set it up. Let's divide now 3 by 9 and 75 hundredths. And we should get 3 and 25 hundredths. If we get that, then we know our answer is correct. Let's begin to divide. Were correct. They rushed nine and seventy-five hundredths miles all together. Beautiful. Let's try one more problem. Again, we're going to use the UPSC method. So let's start by understanding the problem. When we understand, we read the problem, circle what we know, and underline the question. Let's read the problem. Tavon's costume weighed 125 pounds. Sean's costume was two and five tenths times heavier than Tavon's. How heavy was Sean's costume? Now that we've read the problem in understanding, we also have to circle what we know. We know that Tavon's costume weighed 125 pounds and we also know that Sean's costume weighed 2 and 5 tenths times heavier than Tavon's. Now, the last thing we have to do in understanding is underline the question. What do they want us to figure out? They want us to figure out how heavy was Sean's costume. Interesting. Now that we understand, we need to plan. That's correct. Let's figure out the strategy that we're going to use to solve this problem. When we plan, we look for keywords that can help us as well. The keyword in this problem is the word times. That tells us that we have to multiply. So now, Let's solve. 
In solving, we need to set up our problem. So let's set it up guys. Remember, when we multiply by a decimal, we're multiplying as if we are doing a regular whole number. 5 times 5 is 25. We regroup. 5 times 2 is 10 plus 2 is 12. Regroup. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 1 is 6. We put down our zero as a placeholder and begin multiplying by the next number. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5. And 2 times 1 is equal to 2. Now we need to add 5 plus 0, 5. 2 plus 0, 2. 6 plus 5, 11. 2 plus 1, 3. Once we are finished multiplying, now we are to place the decimal point where it belongs. Here, there is only one digit behind the decimal point. So in our answer, there should only be one digit behind the decimal point. So our decimal point goes right there. That's correct. And our answer is 312 and 5 tenths. Now, before we are done, we need to, that's right, check our answer. And to check multiplication, we do the inverse operation, which is division. Now, I know that looks scary, but we should know that when we divide by decimals, the easiest thing is to turn that divisor into a whole number. And we can turn 2 and 5 tenths into a whole number by moving that decimal point one digit to the right. We must remember though, what we do to the divisor, we must also do to the dividend. And so, we need to move that decimal point in the dividend, 312 and 5 tenths, one space to the right. And when we do that, our number changes to 25 and 3125. Now, we can divide. Guys, we were correct. You see, it gave us 125 as our quotient. That means that our answer of 312 and 5 tenths was correct. Try this one now on your own. I'll read it for you. The Saxons scored an overall score of 85 and 32 hundredths. They received this exact score five years in a row. What is the total of all scores received? Remember to use the UPSC method. Understand, plan, solve, and check. Pause the video. Solve this problem. Once you are finished, press play and I'll reveal the answer. Alright guys, let's check our answer. Let's understand by reading, circling, and underlining. Let's quickly reread this problem. The Saxon scored an overall score of 85 and 32 hundredths. They received this exact score five years in a row. What is the total of all scores received? at the problem carefully. Circle what we know. If you circled 85 and 32 hundredths and 5, you are correct. Those are the important information. Now, let's underline the question. The question
question here is what is the total of all scores received? Now, let's plan. What word in there gives us an idea of what it is that we should do? That's correct, the word total. Total means that we need to multiply. It's one of those words that can be multiplication or addition. But in this case, we're going to multiply. Let's solve now. Set up our problem and now let's multiply. Don't forget, our decimal point must match the decimal points provided in the numbers given to us. In this case, we only have two digits behind our decimal point. So in our answer, there should only be two digits behind our decimal point. Before we end, we need to check. If we were to divide 426 and 60 hundredths by 5, we should get 85 and 32 hundredths. If we got that, then our initial answer was correct. You did an awesome job today, guys. Give yourselves a round of applause. Let's do a quick recap. There are numerous keywords that indicate that we must multiply. Some words are per, each, and group. When we have word problems, we know we can use the UPSC method. Understand, plan, Solve and check. Awesome job, guys. Thank you for watching. This lesson was created by Miss Antonia Bain.